I'm home. So you wake up the next morning and after a pretty horrible night, no doubt. And how different is it with one hand as opposed to having both? Well, first thing you do, put your dressing gown on. Uh, and, oh, can't hold both uh, sides of the cord. Uh, so what do you do? You stick it one end in your mouth and pull with your hand on the other. And that's the start of it all. <sighs> Next, off you go downstairs for some breakfast. Uh, I'll have toast this morning. And then, um, all right, so, oh. Well, how do I hold the toast when I butter it? Well, you don't, do you? <laughs> Bear in mind, you've only just come out of hospital, so you haven't got anything that could help you. So what do you do? Make a big mess is what you do. And you might use yourself in your dressing gown to hold the toaster at the side of the uh, kitchen counter. And if you're lucky, you won't get butter all over yourself, all over the counter. And um, yeah, you're getting the idea. It's uh, just... Um, and if you want jam, oh my God, don't go there. I use Marmite. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of the start of it it's like um you know shaving if you wet shave well i never did i always used an electric but if you wet shave uh from what i understand is you have to pull the skin taut and like that well are you going to do that with one hand uh luckily i had an electric razor so that's what i was using but all of a sudden, everything is difficult. Everything takes longer. I mean, seriously longer. Uh, and it's just a complete nightmare. Other joyful things um, for your first few weeks out of uh, hospital. Uh, let's have a little look. What have we got on the list? Oh, yes. So getting dressed in the morning now. Remember, this is 1990. Uh, what did we all do back in 1990? <gasps> we wore watches. Now, my watch had a leather strap and a buckle. So you go, oh, put my watch on. Right. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Right, I put it on my left wrist. Right. Well, how do you look at your watch? Uh, hmm. Do you really? Oh, in fact, hang on, I couldn't even move my shoulder then, so hang on. I'm going to lift it up. Oh, just checking the time. I don't think so. God. So, do you want to wear it on your right wrist? Yeah, okay, well. Leather, buckle. Oh, no. <laughs> Not this, uh, Mum, could you put my watch on, please? And it's like, this isn't very good. Uh, but that's what I did. Um, yes, I could have got one with a metal buckle, you know, elasticated one. Um, but to be quite honest, I stopped wearing a watch after a while. Uh, I think there's um, some video, which you'll see in the next video, of me wearing one two months afterwards. And after that, it's gone. I, I figured out there was a clock in my car. There's a clock at where I work. There's clocks at home. I'll just learn to tell the time. <laughs> I can work out roughly what, what the time is and never worn a watch since. Uh, <laughs> other joys. Oh, I think I'll just put my trainers on now with... Um, uh, oh, well, how do you tie your laces with one hand? Yes, I know it's possible. But when you've just come out of hospital? Mm, not really, is it? Uh and I really didn't quite twig this until I went out on the date. Yes, who would have thought it? A few weeks after I came out of hospital, I went out on a date. And um, so, you know, <clears throat> want to make a good impression, black jeans, uh, oh no, they don't fit because I'm still so swollen from the accident. Uh, we'll have to have a pair, a pair of slightly baggy, stretchy jeans and um, probably a white t-shirt. Leather jacket, yep, okay. Black leather jacket, I'm going to look cool. But 
it doesn't really look very cool when you're having to wear it over your left arm because your left arm's in a sling. But, you know, you're doing your best, so right, I put my best trainers on. Oh. Well. Oh, and there's no one in the house to tie them up. Oh, no. Uh, what should I do? Bear in mind I couldn't drive at this point either. So I got a taxi into Oxford, and the first thing I said to the taxi driver, uh, terribly sorry, but would you mind tying my shoelaces for me, because... I've got my arm in a sling. And he goes, yeah, sure, mate, no problem. But really, the embarrassment factor was quite high. <sighs> Never mind. The date went reasonably well, actually, considering I felt <laughs> like an old cripple. Or mash, no, young cripple. Uh, I'm an old one now. Um... I'll mention that more in in the next um, video, but uh, yeah, it wasn't a disaster. But I actually did learn to tie my shoelaces with one hand, um, but it was all redundant about a week or two later. I was um, watching telly, kind of you do that quite a lot in, in your early days, and uh, I was watching triathlon. Uh, you can tell your life's desperate if you're watching that. But anyway... Um, all these athletes came rushing out the water, leapt on their bikes, reached down, and cycled off. And I thought, that's witchcraft, isn't it? Or something like that. How are they doing? Getting their foot into a shoe, pulling on the lace, one-handed, and doing their shoes up and cycling off. And I thought, no, oh, this is like magic. So I ended up watching it quite a lot. In fact, I might even put a VCR on. VCR, eh? Uh, just to freeze frame so I could examine what's going on. I thought, they look suspiciously like those toggles off rucksacks. Uh, and I thought, God, that's a clever idea. I could do that. Uh, so that's what I did. Literally the next day, went out to the nearest sports shop and bought some. In fact, I ended up buying loads because I had quite a lot of trainers back then. So, some I've got earlier or from before. And, uh, oh, hang on, it's worth... Oh, no, that's crap. Oh, there we go. So there we go. God, it's weird, isn't it? Looking at yourself, and it? Anyway, there you go. Like that. And just to prove I still use them today, 33 years later. There we go. How's that? Oh yeah, now you can see it. So, miracle. That's all I can say. So with regards to work, my employer and um, the orthopaedic centre where I was referred to were in communications about what to do. And luckily my employer was pretty understanding um, and they held my job uh, and were willing to let me go back to work when I was ready. There was quite a lot of communication between the two um, and I wasn't ready to go back to work. I couldn't deal with the pain um, at this point and the lack of sleep because um, if you've got brachial plexus uh, in the early days uh, the sleep is fairly... you just get it when you can because you can be awake all night with the pain and at four o'clock in the morning, you finally had enough, you pass out for about three or four hours and, you know, can, <laughs> you can wake up and the pain's back again. So it's pretty grim. So in those first few weeks, uh, one of the things I had to do was start my bike insurance claim for having it written off. Um, and of course, you know, there was a lot of back and forth about that. You know, this is the book price. Uh, yes, but... I've got this amount of receipts, and it's been in the magazine, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was a long, drawn-out process. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say at the moment. I will mention it in the next video. Um, but it wasn't much fun. Um, also, I've got a bill from the ambulance service, from the ambulance trip. Luckily, 
that's all covered under the insurance so you just send that off to the insurance company and they uh, pay that for you um, <laughs> uh, at this point I hadn't been referred to the pain relief unit at Oxford and um, so my GP was aware in fact I'm vaguely pretty sure my GP came to see me just shows how long ago that was um, but no experience at all of this sort of phantom limb pain and all they can prescribe is you know the usual range of drugs people did have lots of advice of what to take um, you know this is the strongest medicine known to man that you can buy over the counter it stops all pain no, not even when you took twice the recommended amount. Made yourself very ill. Didn't touch it at all. Did make the slightest bit of difference. Sorry, but normal pain relief doesn't work at all. I wanted to start driving again as soon as possible. I was lucky the car I had was an automatic. Uh, it was a Chrysler 2 litre. And you go, what's that? Well... Think of a Mark II Granada, uh, and it's about that size. Two liter engine, automatic gearbox, no power steering. So me parking that was quite hysterical, but it was all academic anyway, because I had to write to the DVLA, uh, tell them of my injury, and then on top of that, I was gonna have to um, inform my insurance company, and boy, did they uh, screw me. But I'll cover that in the next video. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> Not being able to drive was a real pain, uh, but you know, luckily friends and family uh, sort of rallied round and gave me lifts. Um, but also at the same time, you know, you were licking your wounds. You really were. It was like, oh, I really don't want to go anywhere. I just want to vegetate and feel sorry for myself and. But then again, at the same time, you want to pull yourself together. Um, and you, you wanted to be who you were, but you couldn't be. And uh, for me, one of the things I really, really disliked straight away was my sling. Um, you know, it was an NHS sling, so, you know, it's grey, it's big, it's comfortable supportive but it defines who you are so, you know you can be walking down the street and people just look at you differently um, and uh, to some extent you know you, if you rode a motorbike in the 1980s and you walked in somewhere clumpy boots jeans leather black leather jacket and a uh, crash helmet with your arms stuck through that kind of defined you straight away. Well, in the same way, so did the sling. Now, everybody just assumed, you know, uh, that's what you were. It wasn't, it, you know, it didn't define who you were inside, same as the way you look doesn't define who you are. But everyone makes assumptions. Um, it's uh, so. I didn't like my sling at all. <laughs> it's, the, it's the comment I'm coming, I'm making. I, I really didn't like it. In fact, I've just combed through all my photos and the photo albums of my mum and dad, and there is not one picture of me with a sling. That's how much I disliked it. Uh, there aren't that many pictures of me from that era anyway, because uh, certainly for the first year and a half, didn't like the photo being taken after that less so and I'll cover that in other videos um, but yeah walking around with a sling and I'll cover this later on as I've got you know more of a social life going and stuff really didn't like it at all uh, but it was necessary the arm weighed a ton um, no muscle at all uh, it was it was like being a gorilla really with your arm just hanging down um, the other thing I should point out 
this is 1990 and if you wanted to discriminate against somebody with a disability you could uh, as you'll see in some of the other videos and I'm just going to briefly mention it now but it was perfectly legal morally wrong but legal yeah no problem if we want you to charge you extra money just because you've been an RTA road traffic accident um, tough luck pay up uh, so uh, yeah all of a sudden um, life was a lot of hard work and not a lot of fun but um, next three months in the next video will it be any better not really <laughs> uh, so tune in that's all I'll say